We moved to Grand Cayman Island in August of 2004. Our house was right on the beach, just right over the balcony we could see the ocean. It was a very beautiful place. Monroe got a job managing a store called Del Sol. And we were ready to settle down there for the next five years. We were uh, active participants in our branch. Because it was so small, we were able to help out a lot and really bring something to our callings. On September 11, 2004, we found out that there was a hurricane heading our way. So we packed up our stuff, we stored as much as we could in a back room in our house, and we left for an office building in town that was concrete four stories high, where we felt we'd be safe. Many houses in our neighborhood boarded up, but as we found out later, those boards really did nothing to help them. We were very grateful that we were able to go somewhere where we were safe and protected. We shared the office building with 50 other people and we got to sleep in the file room on the floor. It was very comfortable for the most part. The storm began the night of September 11th, but it didn't really get bad till that morning. When we woke up, the wind was howling. We could barely see out the window. There was so much rain and water. We had water coming in through the roof and leaking in through the windows. We had tiles that became so soaked on the ceiling they'd break off and when a, a piece of it fell on Mason while he was sleeping. It was pretty scary. We could see roofs getting ripped off of buildings and corrugated metal was rolling down the street. After the worst of the storm passed, we opened the windows to look out the window to see how huge the waves were. This is an area where there were never any waves. It was completely flat. So it was scary to see such huge waves breaking over the road and washing it out. The devastation that we witnessed after the hurricane was unbelievable. The area of town where we were received the least of the damage that happened on the whole island. You know, we thought it was bad what we saw where we were, but in, once we got out to the rest of the island, we realized how lucky we were. There were parts of the island that were completely underwater. Some people were in their homes during the hurricane, and their homes filled up with six feet of water and they had to sit on top of their refrigerators or climb up into the attic crawl space to keep their head above water. Entire buildings were removed from their foundations and dropped on roads. Many roofs were ripped off buildings, yet the church sustained very little damage. There were many miraculous stories to be heard afterwards and many tales of heroes. And it took a while for the community to recover, but they did recover and were closer because of the tragedy that they had endured. We escaped safely and had a pretty cool story to tell. Stars. Last week they were on an island in the Caribbean when it suffered a direct hit from Hurricane Ivan. John Daly picks up the story from there. Dick and Edie Monroe and Rachel Murdoch and their one-year-old son made it through Hurricane Ivan okay. Their home, like many on Grand Cayman Island, did not. Monroe Murdoch, his wife and son, just got back from Grand Cayman Island where he was working as a manager for a Sandy clothing company. They're not sure when they'll be back because as you can see from their home video, the island was hammered last week by Hurricane Ivan, which they say makes an ordinary Utah blizzard look like child's play. Well, the hurricane is intense. You can barely see out the window. It's nothing like a blizzard, you know, because you just see it ripping things apart and you can kind of see the force of it. It looked like the Category 5 storm would bypass the island. Instead, it took a turn and hit Grand Cayman head on. The Murdochs and about 50 others took shelter in a nearby office building. The scariest moment, when a window suddenly blew out. Just all the men just ran in there and they were slamming uh, file cabinets up against it to get it closed. And I didn't know if it had broken or, or what had happened, but that that's, was probably the scariest point during the hurricane for me just not knowing if the windows were going to hold. And some people we were with thought they were going to die. The storm's power was awesome. Amazingly, no one died, but a fourth of the 40,000 people on the island lost their homes. It would lift whole condominium complexes off the foundation 100 yards and drop it right in the middle of a main road. Just unbelievable aftermath. No electricity, no water for five days, uh, waiting at the airport for 10 hours just trying to get off the island. I mean, it was, it was just... <laughs> an unforgettable experience just being exposed to that and seeing people that lost everything some people just carrying two bags say this is all i have left it was a great it. learning experience and something you can say hey i survived a category five hurricane but i don't want to do it again <laughs>
Yeah, no doubt about that. They say sustained winds were at 165 miles per hour with gusts up to 208. Waves were at 15 feet. The couple says before Ivan, Grand Cayman Island was green and lush. After, they didn't see a single leaf on a tree. Mm, I'll bet not. Wow.